to truly believe in the magic. Hey Magic fans and welcome to this episode of Penny Fee Thoughts, the podcast of the Orlando Magic UK. On today's episode we are going to be discussing three lists that have appeared on Bleacher Report looking at the wings, guards and centres. So let's do the introduction, introductions, introductions to start with. Um, as you'll see, Mikey's missing. He's been uh, off colour all week, so he's uh, resting up. Get well soon, Mikey. But let's go first of all to the Macam Master of Mirth. Gary, how you doing, mate? <laughs> I've never been called that before. Um, <laughs> I'm just laughing because of how I've uh, got my lovely camera on this computer and making you guys look good, apparently. So anything I can hey, do to like help, Paul? Like we said before we went on air, your soft focus is helping me and G, because now everybody doesn't see quite your natural beauty in the way that they would have expected to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> How are you, Mr. Bergen? Doing good, actually. Yeah, yeah, I've had a good week. Yeah, it's been nice. Um, got, managed to get out and do a bit of exercise and the like. So, yeah, it's been good. And spent some time with the, uh, with the, with the granddaughter and uh, daughter and son-in-law. So it's been nice. Yeah, we've had a good week. Had good a good man. week, yeah. And now to the boy out of banter, Grant. How you doing, mate? I'm good, mate. Like you're expecting me to say something witty now or funny, aren't you? But... Far from it. That could have been <laughs> ironic. It was an ironic introduction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm all right though. Thank you, mate. Um, yeah, busy week in work. Um, enjoying the uh, the FIBA World Cup. It's nice to get a bit of basketball back uh, in our lives. Um, and you know, especially with the uh, the magic players participating for you know all these nations, it's uh, lovely to see. And lovely to see yeah, everyone absolutely. doing very well, isn't it? Well, even though we're talking about these uh, lists that have appeared on Bleacher Report, we are going to be bringing in talking about the performances that our guys have put in at the uh, FIBA World Cup. So, and it's been an interesting week. It's been interesting watching. But first of all, let's get the plug out of the way. We are officially now launched with our own Orlando Magic UK Patreon page. Although we are by the time this comes out, you'll probably it will probably be available. We're just waiting on a authorization that uh, everything's okay for publication from Patreon themselves. Subscription service which will help support what we do at Orlando Magic UK.com. We're not looking to make any money out of it. Um, not for ourselves, but by doing this, the plan is that we can use it to improve the content that we provide, uh, give away some really nice prizes and some some exclusive perks to those that have subscribed. We're offering three tiers, the O'Neill, which is only £2 a month, the Anderson, which is £5 a month, and the McGrady at £10 a month. You know, we've got to pay homage to three of the, the greats to wear the pinstripe. And uh gotta go with T Mac as the uh the greatest, haven't you? The big the top the top tier, I suppose. At, uh, One, so two, yes. points there. At, uh, yeah. Um we'll go through I'm not gonna bore you with all the details of what's in what we're having with each tier. You can look along as uh when it's all out and about. Um however, if you sign up during September on either the Anderson or the McGrady tier you will be entered into our first monthly prize draw. Uh, we're giving away a full NBA League Pass subscription. It will be up and running in time for the start of the preseason. So you've got until September the 30th to be included in this giveaway, and the draw will take place on the 1st of October. So if you'd like to help us do what we do, we would very much appreciate it. If not, keep watching. We're, we're, we're good with that. So let's talk some magic basketball in the loosest terms. Um, there's been a fun set of lists come out this week from Bleacher Report uh, predicting the top 30 centres, the top 30 wings and the top 30 guards in the NBA. They've also done a list of the top 100 players. Um, we know full well that looking at the list, we'd all reel them in some ways, but I think it's an interesting jump off point to look at the magic depth from this perspective. So let's start with the centres, start with a big man position. Um, for me, this list has got some debatable inclusions. Uh, the honorary mentions were Jakob Pertl, uh, Zubac, Clint Capella, our very own Wenner Carter Jr., and Jeremy Sohan. 
Uh, the top 30 from 30 down to one reads Kevon Looney, Nick Claxton, John Collins, Robert Williams, Walker Kessler, Jabari Smith Jr., Alpern Sengun, Nikola Vucevic, Brooke Lopez, Chet Holmgren. How's Chet above Brooke? Don't understand that one. Aaron Gordon, not really a big man in my opinion. Jarrett Allen, Victor Wembyama, Rudy Gobert, Miles Turner, Julius Randle, DeAndre Ayton, Draymond Green, Chris Zingas, and Evan Modley into the top 10. Do, 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 do. Doing a bit of a chart countdown for you there. It's uh, Demontis Sabonis in at number 10, followed by Jaron Jackson Jr., uh, Zion Williamson, Bam Adebayo, Pascal Siakam, Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Davis, and Joel Embiid is number three. Giannis Antetokounmpo is number two, and the top is Nikola Jokic. So, Gary, before you before you go to Gary, yes, you now go on. To- Tony Blackburn, mate. You got Tony <laughs> Blackburn. You got the half. You know get what? I've got all these. All I've, these I've got I've got two more of these lists. These chart <laughs> countdowns to do, and I hope they get better. <laughs> well, Bruno Bruno Bacon next. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Gary Davis here. <laughs> so, <laughs> Gary, in the off-season, we all hoped that the Magic would uh, get someone in to provide a backup to Wendell. What we saw was Mo Wagner and Gega Batazzi return. And now into the mix comes Santa Banquero. Um, first up, how, when, how's Wendell not in that top 30 when you look at some of the names? But secondly, mate, Paolo, Goga and Mo all getting generous plaudits for their performances in the World Cup. What have you seen and liked from them in this past week? Um, I think first things, Paul, when, you, when you're talking about the uh, the lists here, just so I'm clear in my head, is this a predicted list? Yes, this is their predicted list of the top 30 who will be the top performers. There it's, was some complicated mathematical it's formula a... that they used and whatever, but... I yeah, don't know the positions of these players, some of them. Because they call they call it centres, aren't they? Am I right? They call the centres. Call it the big man. Big call man. it big man. Okay. See, I look at that, and you look at it objectively, which I'm going to try to do, but you could also be a bit, a bit biased with it as well. So I'll try and cover both. I would say, as a homer, so if I looked at it with from a biased point, you could make the argument that he's better than Looney. He's better than Claxton. From what we've seen last season, he's better than John Collins, maybe in the last two seasons. And it depends where you stand on whether Jabari Smith Jr. is going to take a leap because he showed signs in the last quarter of last season about where he could be. You know, you can see he's a a rebound and menace perhaps waiting. And then you've thrown in um, Chet, who hasn't played a game yet, really. Um, Weminyama, which... He's going to feature just because of the hype that's there. Yeah. So fair enough. And you look at the potential, and I think Chet's going to be fantastic. I really do. I was on the Chet train in the uh, the draft. I still think there's a lot there in Chet. But then I'm looking at potential, and I'm thinking, well, John Collins, it's not a potential deal anymore, is it? It's whether Utah suits him or not. And then there's the argument of whether Vooch right now is better than Wendell Carter Jr. right now. And I, I don't know if he is. I really, really don't know if he is. Now, if I was to step back and say, take the Homer glasses off, the problem with Wendell is is injuries. Yep. And you could look at that and say, well, if you predict in the future, is he going to play 65 games next season? And the other thing would be exposure on a winning team. Now, there's other players there on losing teams that would blow that argument out the water, but you could put it forward and say, is he a winning basketball centre? And has he got the um, the injury record to produce? If if he's going to be on that list and make it look foolish, he's got to play the games. And I think he's got to get 10 rebounds or more, roughly a night, because that's the area the Magic are lacking, I think massively so for Wendell the stake is claim you're looking at really he needs to have a good 17 and 10 season where he's played a fair few games right. Zion Williamson is eight yeah if we're talking about availability 
being a player's strength. How many games did he manage last season? I don't think it was anywhere near what Wendell played. I totally agree, but it comes back to the exposure, doesn't it? Like when when Zion plays, New Orleans tend to win games and look like a playoff team. I think he's probably just been overlooked. If the truth's known, and they haven't seen what his game's like, because we we keep an eye on Vooch, and I like Vooch, but I I don't think Vooch is where he was when we were in that playoff series against Milwaukee anymore. Did anybody watch him today? Anything against yeah. States? I've seen the highlights, but is he that player in the NBA anymore? Because he had a he had a he was superb today. He what? he, I know that. When you read the reports, I watched the game live. When you read the reports, it's all about Jaron Jackson Jr. pouring 11 points in and Ant-Man doing this and Austin Reeves doing that. If you watched that game, Booch was all over Jackson in that first quarter. Absolutely owned him. And it was when they took Jackson off and brought Paolo on that all of a sudden Montenegro's uh, production started to drop off. Paolo had a really strong defensive game against him, and Bobby Porter as well. God, love that guy. So much fun to watch. So much fun to watch. But yeah, what's what's been your thoughts on Goga and Mo o- over the week? Um, well, so the thing I was going to add there with just with Bancaro, Paul, I think um, is that when we look at what he's done, first of all, it's the defensive side of his game. You know, that was the knock on him going in the draft last year. And when we had a discussion on the pod and it was a case of whether it really was Palo or whether it was the system at Duke, which it looks like it was more the system. But it's the the blocks and what he's doing in the paint is what we want more of from Palo. Um, Because we have lacked, without Jonathan Isaac, a rim-protecting presence there. You know, we traded away Bamba for everything else. He could swat shots. Um, so we need somebody who can step up with the blocks. If Paolo can add that to his game next season, that'll be great. So that's what stood out about Paolo. Um, he makes it look easy in those games. He never looks as though he's breaking a sweat or he's you know in in effort. And when you look at him in France, I think the eyes of the world are starting to realise Orlando's got a very good double act because we're starting to appear in these internet Twitter account things about who's got the best young pair. There's been a few putting Paolo and Franz together um, I think with Mo Wagner he's getting exposure with Franz out and I noticed before we came on air that um, Yanis has now got both brothers signed at the books and, and I've not it, seen that yeah it's all three apparently are there now Just be, the last thing I looked at before we logged on was a tweet and it said all three Wagners uh, sorry all three Anacumbos are in the um, uh, on the books now and I think what we've got is, is we're seeing that it's not that situation with Mo. Like, I know he got the contract and stuff with Orlando, but at least he can play. At least he's we're seeing that he's a, he's a serviceable, good basketball player, which from watching Magic games, we know. We know how he affects the game and what he does well. And he put up 14, 16 and 5 against uh, Georgia. And, you know, thunderous dunk, talking trash, that type of thing. And that that's what he does well. And he he's a guy who impacts the game and he's a perfect bench player as a you know to bring to bring in there because he can affect games moods temperament etc Gorga I haven't watched that much of Georgia but his stat lines in the games I've been keeping up and that have been quite impressive yeah so you've got there two young serviceable one of them's going to try and stake their claim ahead of the other and they're off of different things in the um so I think it's going to be interesting to see which one of those, if not Jonathan Isaac, stakes the uh, claim for backup minutes or if Wendell struggles with their uh, injuries again? I think Jonathan Isaac will see some time at the five. What do you think Paolo might get some time at the five, seeing how well he's played um, You know, in, the, in these last couple of weeks? Positionless basketball, G, yeah? Yes, absolutely. Where I think you could see him switching with Jonathan Isaac and Franz. I don't think Franz is going to see time at the five, but you could see those three working together on the court would be quite interesting. Or you could even push Franz down at the guard and see what they do with Wendell, G.I. and Paolo as well. Because G.I. can start three slots. So, Gary, based on what we've seen from this trio of Goga, Mo and Paolo, plus our starting big man, Wendell, who, by the way... He was an honourable mention for the 
Bleacher Report, NBA's top 100 players of their predictions for next season. And apparently he's missed out by a whisker, was how they kind of phrased it. Are you happy that we didn't take a backup centre this summer it overall? It depends what was available as a backup mm. centre. So if you were telling me, you know, there was rumours going around that Vooch was going to come back. There was, you know, I think Mikey was uh, banging the drum to try and get Brooke Lopez. And those types of players would move the needle for what the Magic could offer off the bench in particular, if not challenging and eventually taking the starting job. We don't know. But I think if you're looking at it as what else was available, if we didn't have Jonathan Isaac coming back, I would probably be a little bit, that's a bit risky. But I think we've got two serviceable bigs with a point to prove. We're a young team. We've got room for trades. We've got room for doing it next season. And there's always the, well, let's see what we've got. And I think it's going to just give us a bit of flexibility to think, does one or the other stake their claim? Do we alternate them depending on matches? Or does Jonathan Isaac in particular step up and either take the backup minutes or even challenge for the starting role? as a centre. Yeah. See, I, I love these lists, these sorts of things, because they're, they're written for debate. Of course they are, which, yeah. which is what we're doing, which is what we do here. We we like to talk about these sorts of things, so I like. So, G, come on, anything to add, mate, on what Gary said? No, I absolutely agree with everything Gary said there, to be perfectly honest with you. I, I'd just be uh, repeating what he's just said. Um, no, and, you know, it's good to see, um, you know, Mo and Goga have... Um, you know, very successful FIBA World Cups. Um, and, and, you know, you trust the front office, as we said many a time, um, and you hope that, you know, one of these two, whoever gets the nod as the backup centre, will, um, you know, up their game and become a reliable backup centre, which is what we need. And, and, you know, you've got Goga on the cheap. Obviously, you paid Mo a little bit more money. Um, so we've still got the flexibility. So, you know... It's it's about finding those diamond in the you know, diamond in the rough, and I think Goga could be one of them. You know, yeah. very impressed with you know, he's just in the right places. He's good hands, good footwork. Just you know, understands his position. Winning, mate. winning basketball player, yeah. Given the opportunity, so yeah. no, I, I I'm more than happy with you know bringing those two back and having that flexibility, which is what it's all about, and not just putting ourselves in a position. Um, we're you know we're hamstrung by the cap. Okay, so let's do it. Final sub. Finally, on the subject of the big men, we've seen this week, understandably, a very emotional Dwight Howard, um, apparently taking ownership of his exit from the Magic, showing regret. So, mate, is it time for Magic fans to forgive and see him retire in the blue and white pinstripes? Well, when when I, when I read that. It was an Instagram post. I think Amy must have been cutting onions or something because you know it did bring a bit of a, <laughs> bit, of, bit of a tear to the eye. Bless him. Um, yeah, I, I I said a couple of weeks ago. You know, if we had that extra roster spot, um, I'd have liked to see him just finish with us for all that he did for us. How good he was. You know, defensively he was. An absolute beast. Uh, you know, nobody was coming into the paint. You were playing against, you know, LeBron, D. Wade, um, you know, Kobe, etc. Um, and and he was changing the way the other teams were, you know, when they came up against the magic, they knew they couldn't go to the paint. They had to find another way to score on us. And that was because of Dwight. Um I was at a playoff game, um, I think it was was it the Hawks back in like 2011, 2010, 2011? I can't even remember now, but I th I think he put up forty odd fifty. It might have been fifty points. Uh, a lot of free throws, but carried us an absolute man mountain of a of a player. Um, and he belongs in the Orlando Magic Hall of Fame. Let's not beat about the bush. Um, you know, he he gave us some really good times. Uh, you know, it obviously did sour. Um, as as he you know wanted wanted different things, but you know, time is a healer. Um. And uh, it's time that, you know, we brought him home, gave him a good ovation. And you want to see him in the stands at the Amway Centre, you know, supporting his team. Because when he gets into the, you know, the, the hall, Basketball Hall of Fame, he'll be known as an Orlando Magic player. He won't be known as a, an LA Laker player. Everything that he did, he accomplished the three 
Defensive Player of the Years were with Orlando. Um, got to the finals with Orlando. Okay, he got a ring with the Lakers, but you know he was a bit part bench player then, and he was a Mickey Mouse. Um, Mickey Mouse. You're, ring, still, you're still putting an asterisk to the side of that one, aren't you? Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Um, so, um, but no, he, he, if you think Dwight Howard, you think Orlando Magic, don't you? So time, yeah. time to let it bygones be bygones. Move on. Um, you know when when he did return with the with the Lakers and the Rockets, I'd be booing him. Absolutely, you would, because you know you you support the 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 team team's name on the front of your jersey, not the the player on the back. Mark L. Fultz went elsewhere. You know, no offense, Mark L. Sorry. You know, I support the team in blue and white. So, um, yeah, but no, let's bring him home, give him a ceremony, even if it's a one day contract, it's just so he can retire as a member of the Magic. Um, it's probably the wrong, you know, time to bring him as an extra body. Come to think of it, you know, now seeing how well, um, you know, that center rotation is looking. Um, but I don't know if if he did get him on a, on on a minimum, you know, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be annoyed because he, he might be able to, you know, mentor mentor um, Wendell. So yeah, what do you think? I I, I said it last time around. If there's a roster spot available and you've got a um, Dwight Howard who is willing to be a mentor and Dwight Howard who is willing to be a teammate and not um, the ego, then I think he can offer something to our team, to our young guys. And look, I I, I wasn't a fan of basketball. I started watching sort of 2010. So uh, the uh, in fact it was the end of the 2010 season so uh, he uh, I didn't see a lot of the magic. In fact I don't think I saw anything of the magic particularly on on what we were watching on on Sky and the like. So for me I don't really have a dog in the fight as far as memories yeah. of his exit from Orlando. So I'm kind of the position of looking at history's history, it doesn't affect me. Do I feel he can do something for our team now? And if I do, which if you've got the right version of this man, then I think you can. And the way he was standing and owning his behaviour. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the first time he's owned it, to yeah. be honest with you. And that that just shows a bit of matu- maturity. And I remember now when we spoke about it a couple of weeks ago, it was 2 2. It was me and you said, yeah. bring him back. And uh, our dear friends here said, no, we're, we're done. Mate, we've got to <laughs> say, we've got, we've, got, we've got to go to the to the flip side of the argument. Yeah. As was. Any change, Gary? Not really. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I like Dwight Howard a lot. And I'll I'll put it in the context of how much of a Dwight fan I was. Um, the blue jersey with where we had the star, and when T Mac was leaving town, I bought that at NBA City Walk when they had the NBA store there. Yeah. Before Dwight Howard touched a ball for the Orlando Magic as an authentic, I was like, this is such a leap of faith. When you're kind of like, I'm going to totally go all in on this guy. I wasn't particularly thrilled with how T Mac left. I thought there was scope where he could have stuck around actually and gone into it with Dwight and I was like you know what the king's dead long live the king and this is who it's going to be and you know I've got Dwight Howard authentics Dwight Howard all-star jerseys I've been over and seen Dwight play for the magic stayed up in the early hours and watched seen what he's done I actually think this the season we got to the finals yeah LeBron was supreme but I think there's an argument there that Dwight Howard was every bit as good a player in the Eastern Conference as what LeBron James was and if you subtracted LeBron from the Cavs what would you have but if you subtracted Dwight Howard from the Magic well we saw what happened when that happened and the Magic yeah. went from being a you know a perennial contender to being in obscurity for years and the whole system was built around Dwight Howard with the shooters the way basketball's played since was almost that was the blueprint for that model that Stan Van Gundy had. So for me, Dwight Howard's certainly in the Magic Hall of Fame. 
he's a top 75 player. I did a I did a thing elsewhere when I talked about it, it was absolutely ridiculous that Dwight wasn't in the top 75. I think his career with the Magic's better than anything Anthony Davis has done so far. As an example, I'm, not just, I'm just picking one name there off yep. the NBA 75. He's done so much, and I think it got to the point, and this is how sick I was, that for about six months before Dwight went, I was just like, just trade him. Please make the Dwight Mayer end. And when when I was travelling America on the West Coast, we drove past LA on the day that Dwight went. And I was like, I don't even care, it's the Lakers. I'm not bothered. It's just, I'm sick of this pantomime, it has to go. The apology, I, I wasn't, nobody was chopping onions around me. You know, if there was a woman standing in my kitchen uh, chopping onions, I'd be calling the police and saying, what are you doing? <laughs> 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 and I don't like onions either when you're at it. But um, what I would what I would say is, um, it's a bit of a. I accept the apology. He's owned it. I think it's brought a lot of people together through tragedy. Yeah. But I always look at it as well, and I was kind of like, well, you aren't in the NBA right now, and any NBA nice. contract is an NBA contract. And on one hand, I'm all for a one day contract if it's not at the expense of any other player any player who's currently on the team but sometimes you know if you looked at it through the lens of an ex-girlfriend type of scenario is it a kiss or an ex-boyfriend scenario if you you know like depending on what you, but if you looked at it and said an ex and you said they've been around they've seen everything else and then they realized they had the best deal actually originally yep. and then they come back when nothing else is on the table and i I'm not being controversial when I say that, but I'm kind of like, we've grown since then. Things have changed. The landscape's changed. And I get it. I accept the apology. I would love to see him back in the Magic Hall of Fame. I would love to see him on the court getting a wave, getting the number 12 retired, thrown up in the, the rafters. Thank you, Dwight, playing the Superman theme. Jimmy, you're out there with him. All of that. But if you said at the expense of a young player on the roster, no. Right. And can I just... Uh... Like I say, I don't have a a history with Dwight as far as the magic go. So, but I do understand where there are people saying no, wouldn't want him, wouldn't touch him for anything. I do understand that. There's players, there's a, a certain couple of players with Leeds United that I have that feeling for because of how they behaved whilst they were at the club. So I do understand where there are people who are saying, no, I don't want him anywhere near the club. And while there's still that animo animosity towards him, I do understand that. I will say, Paul, like, I, when he's been at Charlotte, when he's been at Washington, to an extent, Houston, etc., I've backed him. And I've wanted it. So I don't ha carry that bitterness and resentment. No, I'm saying where there's, where there's others, because I'm sure that we will get comments get about, it. no, it can I do get one. It. I can totally understand where that, that comes from. And it just for me, it all comes down to livelihood. And if the, if it meant that somebody who was a young player who was trying to get their way in the league lost out on their chance for ten games, say, or one game even, and no, you you know, like if it was filling a need for us, that's a different matter. If it benefited us, yeah. So let's talk about the wings then. This is a category we fare much better in. Um, I'm only mentioning two of the honourable mentions, Dylan Brooks and Harrison Barnes. The top 30 predicted wings for the NBA, starting at number 30, is Tobias Harris, Josh Hart, Jaden McDaniels, Bojan Bogdanovic, Keegan Murray, RJ Barrett, Bruce Brown, Keldon Johnson, Kyle Kuzma. Uh, then you have Michael Porter Jr., Cameron Johnson, uh, uh, Josh Giddy. Surprised he wasn't a little bit higher. Uh, Jeremy Grant, Scotty Barnes, and then our first entry at number 16 is Franz Wagner. 15, Chris Middleton, OG Ananobi, Andrew Wiggins, a bit overdone for me, DeMar DeRozan, then into the top 10. Sorry, just outside the top 10 at number 11 is Paolo Banquero. Top 10, Laurie Markinum, Brandon, In Brandon Ingram, Mikhail Bridges, Jalen Brown, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard. Jimmy Butler at four, Kevin Durant at three, LeBron James at number two, and at the top position is Jason Tatum. So, 16, Franz Wagner. 
He also ranked 52 in the prediction of the top 100 players for the uh, of the NBA. Uh, France has been sitting for the last couple of games, so we can't really talk about his contribution on the international stage this week, which was a shame. Though I did notice on the commentary today that they did say he's fit and able to play. He just didn't play today because of not having trained. Um, but the article dropped in an interesting nugget that of last season's stats, 18.6 points, 3.5 assists, 1.6 from three and uh, one steal per game. There are only six other players in the NBA history of his height or taller who have matched or exceeded those four marks in a thousand minute plus season. So as he enters year three, what are you expecting from Franz and his position in the list? About right for you, G. Yeah, well, let's get into the position on the list first and foremost. Looking at those players, there's it's a very good list. It is. Um, it's hard to this one's hard to yes, argue, I think. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the only one perhaps I'd I'd put him above is maybe Wiggins of, of that list. Um I could like make a ca- I, I could make a case that Bancaro should be higher. Uh, if I'm honest with you, I think he's better than Mark and Ingram, Michael Bridges, for example. So I'd probably put him about eight. Uh maybe that's with my uh, blue tinted glasses on. Uh but you're See, no when, you come, when you're looking at the World Cup, Ingram and Bridges are both ahead of him as far as in the pecking order for Team USA. They are, but then I suppose if you were to start a franchise, which would you want on your team? It's a very good if, argument. If you know what I mean. Um, and you know, he's got the, you know, um, just on Paolo now. Paolo, you know, Paolo's got the keys. Everything's going to run through Paolo and Franz. Paolo number one, Franz number two. Um, so having them, you know, where they are shows a lot of respect, I think, from from the list makers, which is which is nice to see. Um, in terms of what we expect from France, you know, he's played two years in the NBA. He's played a lot of games as well. You know, he's he's a he's a warrior. As Dante mentioned uh, last week, you know, he doesn't like to miss games. He's had the ball in his hands, which has been good. He's played when the Magic had a lot of injuries. So, you know, a guard. So he was taking over the guard role. Again, a lot of ball in the hand. So he's had a lot of decision-making uh, responsibilities, which is only going to stand him, stand him in good stead as players grow. So the more we're going to get out of him um, as the season goes goes on, you know, the better he's going to get. Um, and you mentioned his numbers there, Paul, you know, 18 points per game. When we drafted him two years ago, uh, um, what was it, eight on eight or nine, whatever it was, you know, did we think he was going to be this good? No. Hey, no. 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 No, we didn't. What was we everybody's didn't. reaction to it? Well, Cortez will tell you that, wouldn't he, Gary? Yeah, everybody, everybody was like, <laughs> "Really?" No, he, he wasn't the Cortez. player that we. Yeah, he wasn't the player that we all, that anybody wanted. No, absolutely. So you know, if he can go to go from strength to strength, you know, shoot, uh, shoot you know, a little bit better, maybe uh, get people more involved play the games he's been playing, it gets to 20 points per game, just impact on winning. That's all we, we're looking for now. We feel like we've got the front court in place, especially with those two, Bancaro and Wagner. Um, and I know we're going to get onto the guards in a, in a little bit. Um, but I don't think you can ask any more any more from what he's done. Um, can, you, can you think of anything more that you, you could ask him to do? Honestly? Honestly, no, no. Exactly. I, I suppose perhaps a better percentage from three, but are we, or is that wishful thinking? I mean, I think uh, that's just nitpicking, this, isn't it? Yeah, to be exactly. I think that you only had to watch any game last season to know that the two players that saw defensive attention above any other on the Magic was were these two, Paolo yeah. and Franz, because everybody knew. That these were the scorers. These were the guys. If you stop these two scoring, you stunted what the magic could do. And also, you know, he gets the ball at the death. You know, we trust him to put the ball in the bucket as time expires. Uh, and he's had that responsibility a couple of times. Um, and, and he's only going to benefit from the experience 
Uh, and it's just a matter of growing with the team, with Coach Mosley. Um, and as the team gets a bit older, uh, we get the you know the pieces into place. You know, I, I'm very happy with Franz Wagner on the team. Yeah, absolutely, I think it's a shame he's had to sit out this week with the ankle injury because it would be <laughs> the games that they're playing. Whilst perhaps not the toughest teams, it's playing competition basketball at the highest level but there's not many higher levels in world basketball that you can play I would probably put the Olympics above it in all honesty yeah. because you get you look at the team that Team USA will probably turn out in Paris next year won't be this one that we're watching this time around mm. Very so one likely. last point on Franz you know when he plays for Germany he's it's the nice. sole focus of Germany. the opposition uh, you know, he has the ball most of the time. You know, Schroeder plays, you have, uh, Mo Wagner plays, but uh, Daniel Tice, but Franz is their guy. So, I mean, you look back to last season when he was defending Giannis. Um, I, I forget what the cup was. Was it the Euro Cup or something? Um, it was uh, Euro Basket, it's called. Euro yeah. Basket, that was it. Um, but But just the exposure there. Uh, and and like what Gary said, uh, you know earlier, people are, are, are noticing. You know, Orlando's got these two studs on the team, um, and to see them sixteen and eleven, you know, it'll do. It's nice it? It'll do. Yeah. It'll do. Nice to uh, We're going to talk about that other other stud. I know we've already mentioned him, uh, Gary. What Paolo did last season saw him ranked as the fortieth best player in this NBA one hundred list. Um. We've already spoken about centre bank aero. We've talked about his strength and weaknesses at the four in other pods. So today, let's focus on his work ethic. You look at the year he's had. Drafted at number one. Immediately goes out and plays in the Pro-Ams. Straight into Summer League, into training camp. Plays um, 34 minutes per game. In 72 games. Earns Rookie of the Year. Carries the team facing two, three defenders every every possession. Hits up Summer League for team building with the team. Is now out with USA Men's National Basketball Team at the World Cup. What are your thoughts on his work ethic and his, his willingness to do things for his career? Just before I say that, um, it's interesting you and G throwing studs around there. I thought it was a bit like Greece with um, Olivia Newton John. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> We're going to have a sing song in a second and all that. Um, G Travolta <laughs> over there, you know. But um, <laughs> it's. Christ, does that make me Sandy? Well, <laughs> nobody wants to see me in tight leather pants like she's wearing at the end. I, I hope I've, we've ruined it for somebody <laughs> out there. Uh, you know, the, the Ross Star Wars moment from Friends, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I really hope that's the case as well. Um, what can you say? Pa Paolo and Franz, both to me, you look at the work ethic of both of them. We've drafted on character. I know we, we had the chat before, and I'm not trying to bring the name back up, but we, we chatted about Grady Dick and said, is, was that the reason why we didn't we didn't plump for him in the draft? But we do know there's a lot of emphasis historically in the Orlando Magic organisation about what your character is, and it's it goes beyond this regime. But I, I do think a lot of stock's put into that. And the Magic have known what they've gotten with Paolo Banquero with that number one pick when we selected him without working him out in Orlando. Jabari came into town, Chet came into town, we didn't see Paolo come through. So the organisation had obviously done due diligence about what they were getting. And it was also not a great Duke setup in terms of where Duke can go. Like, gee, I think you're a bit of a Duke guy, if uh, I'm mm -hmm. right. And that, that Duke team that Paolo was in, it was kind of like the end of an era for Coach K and things like that, if, if I'm being right here. Yeah. So I think it was a case of who's going to be the number one pick, what are you getting? And what we're seeing is you know, the word in Seattle is about how good a baller and how good a leader and how good a person Paolo Banquero is. And I think we're seeing a lot of that now. And it's only going to grow. Whatever you want to say about this US team that's out there, players like Edwards, players like Bridges, players like Halliburton, Brunson, Ingram, etc. 
Brandon Ingram's a massive player for the for the um, New Orleans. Huge player. Zion Williamson, we've already said, barely played. So when it comes to relevance and producing and facing like number one options, it's usually Brandon Ingram. So these players, any of those guys could be on Team USA in an Olympic situation. And they are having that impact on him. Crucially as well, what impact is Steve Kerr's mentality from what he's been winning, having on Bancaro? Because when Bancaro came into the league, not his not his knock, but people looked at his size and saw 250, 260, 610, 611. Can he play the five? And there was people saying he wasn't willing to do it. Now Paolo's talking openly about fluid basketball. And, and I think we're in a position where going into next season, um, what more could you ask for from Paolo Bancaro? And it, it's nitpicking. Yeah, well, I was going to ask you what your expectations are from him. Yeah. So... Uh... Where, where where do you see how how do you see him next season? How can he improve on what he did? I think to be more efficient, yeah, would be the big one. I think we need rebounding, and I think that needs to increase across the team. But it has to come from Paulo and France. I think that we need to see from Paulo like eight rebounds plus a game ideally, and if he added anywhere near to like a thirty five percent plus three three ball the league's got a bit of a problem <laughs> with Bancaro because he, he we know that he can shoot the three and we went through that slump but over the, the whole season we know that he's got a three ball in him it's just becoming more consistent and better so for me it's an efficient 20 points plus a game with improved rebounding and three point shooting is what I would like from Paolo do you, do you like to see him up on his on his free throws oh yeah obviously you know uh Free throw shooting, um, you know, it, it's three points, isn't it? You know, you'd, you'd like to see uh, everybody uh, shoot the ball a bit better at the line. Uh, and I think the Magic, as a team, did last year compared to, you know, years in the past um, from, from what I remember. But I just wanted to throw this back to you guys. Do you think he needs to be a little bit more vocal? Do we, you know, who's the vocal leader on this team? Cole you know, because we, we don't really see it other than Cole. I think you Let's saw see. him increasingly talking throughout last season on the court. You don't, oh, let's be fair, the guy was a rookie. Yeah. Um, there's, it Do you know what I mean? Though? The only it, thing I'm thinking is it like takes a bit of leadership. Yeah, but it takes an extraordinary amount of arrogance to come in in your first year, in your first few weeks. And go right. Your lot listening to me. I'm the leader. Yeah, I think we saw throughout the season his um, leadership vocally improve and come more to the fore. I think it's a very fair point, G. That yes, you're at the end of the day. He is the star of our team. You and this is, nit- star- like you, you said, want- this is nitpicking, yeah. this is. But you want the you star know. of your team to be one of those voices. Yes. <laughs> I, th- I think we have players like Cole. We have players like um, Mo, who, whether they're on the court or not, are going to be speaking. Well down gonna- as well. Yeah. Joe Ingalls. Going uh, yeah. Gary, you've took the words out of my mouth where I was going to go. He has a huge part to play in that development um, of that facet of Paolo. But I think it. I think where he is for his time in the league is acceptable. Yeah, I think that we. Mm. I I think that's something that you could well see. For me, I I, I really want to see him start. Have it, even though his free throw percentage wasn't awful, I would like to see him pick up one or two more because they're, like you said, G, three points. Yeah. But uh, anybody else watching this uh, and feeling the World Cup and watching and feeling that there's points where people are, are almost daring Paolo to shoot from deep. I don't. Mm. I, I don't think it was just the impression I got in a couple of possessions, or whether it's something because he's not. He's not. 
he's not playing that position. He's not playing the four to be shooting that. I didn't. Uh, so that's why I'm asking the question. It's not. Do you think it's a one as well, where when he's been seeing minutes at the five, that he's dropping out into territory that people can't defend him in? Hmm. You know, like it's like from where I've seen it, he's had a few open looks, and you could say, okay, that's is it defense is dropping off but by the same token i look at it and think maybe this is all part of the plan where it's everybody's out and it's just thrown it's thrown teams off yeah yeah again we've not seen we've not seen him play this position and it's um it was just a question i got to say from just a couple of possessions where he's been almost not closed in on um, well, well, as if somebody was more concerned at the drive than the shot from deep, but it's mm-hmm. it allowed him to a cup, one of them it allowed him to make a nice assist, beautiful pass for somebody else. So, all good, all good, mm-hmm. right? It's time to move on to the guards. G has just got up out of his chair to light his pitchforks and uh torches, collect them all ready in advance of uh having a rant because. When we go down the list of the potential, the projected top 30 guards, the Magic don't have a single mention, not even in the honourable mentions. Uh, the honourable mentions were Marcus Smart, Anthony Simons, CJ McCollum, Jordan Poole, Jalen Green, Scoot Henderson, Jalen Williams, Malcolm Brogdon, Devon Vassell, Benedict Matherin, Jaden Ivey, Mike Conley, and D'Angelo Russell. That is the honourable mentions outside of the top 30, and we haven't got a mention in there. So, this list, 30 down to number one. Gee's going to love this. Austin Reeves and Chris Paul, 30 and 29. Derek White, Tyler Hero, Des Bain, Clay Thompson in the high 20s, Fred Van Vliet, Tyrese Maxey, Lamelo Ball, Jonte Murray. At 20, it's Zach Levine. 19 is Cade Cunningham, Darius Garland, Drew Holiday, Jalen Brunson, Bradley Beal, Tyrese Halliburton, Trey Young, Kyrie Irving, James Harden at 11. Heading into the top 10, we've got Yarmoran, Donovan Mitchell, De'Aaron Fox, Jamal Murray, Anthony Edwards, Dame Lillard, Shea Gilgis Alexander, top three, Devin Booker, Steph Curry, and number one, Luka Doncic. So, there's only one person that we can go to on this subject. And it's over to the Cardiff chapter and founder of the Fellowship of the Fultz Appreciation Society. Does this give you any concerns, G, about the view, the our, our guard depth? And do you feel that anyone on the magic merited inclusion? The floor is yours, young man. Uh, right. Right. First and foremost, I must say, you know, the guard position, there is a lot of players here. You know, every team's got, you know, a good two, three quality guards on. You've got 30 teams. So you're looking at, you know, 60 to 90 very good guards. So first problem is nobody watches the magic. You know, you mentioned it earlier, the, the the media don't watch us. We don't get national games. And then, right, so there's a couple of them that I've picked in the top 30. There was a couple in the honourable mentions, but I'm not going to bother with them. I mean, Scoot, Scoot Henderson hasn't picked up a basketball yet, and his numbers in the in the G League Ignite weren't great anyway, were they, against, you know, inferior opposition. So I'm not even going to go there. Um, Jaden Ivey, hmm, really? You know, <laughs> right, let's, no, break it, let's pull it back. Right, so the, the magic guards. So I'm I'm gonna say three that we've got. So obviously the first one is King Markel, average fourteen points, four rebounds, six assists, fifty one percent from the field, seventy eight at the line, one and a half steals. Improved greatly. He's only played one hundred ninety one career games. Cole Anthony, your guy. So. 13 points, 5 rebounds, 4 assists, 45% from the field, 36 from downtown. Again, 172 career games. I've got Jalen Suggs in there. Obviously, he's had two injury-plagued seasons. 
10, 3 and 3, but we know how much of a defensive, you know, pest he is. Um looking at that honorable mention list, Marcus Smart, let's be honest, he should have been in there. Anthony Simons, I think he should have been in there. Jordan Poole, mm, maybe not. Um but you're looking at that 30, and there's a couple of them I picked out. Austin Reeves. Oh my god, he's the darling of the NBA, isn't he? Oh my life. Scored 13 points per game, three rebounds, three assists in 29 minutes last season. And the only reason he's on this list is because he plays for the Los Angeles Lakers. Agree? Um, I mean, I mean, he's, right. he's in the spotlight at the moment because he, he, he had a he good is. playoff run and he's playing for Team USA. But I'll be honest, right, I said earlier to Gary when we, when we were talking about... Uh, Team USA game. I'm not going to lie. I would have liked us to have made a bit of a run at trying to pick him up because his link-up play with Paolo is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Really good together. Really good together. Um, when you're talking about it being projection, it's hard. I think that, I'll be honest, I think that th- that list, the top 30, is probably quite hard to argue against. There's there's a couple. Oh, I, I got a see. couple. I got a couple. I know you will have. Go on, mate. Uh, Derek White. I knew you'd go there. Oh my <laughs> god. I'm guessing he's in there. A because he's Boston Celtic. B because Marcus Smart isn't there any longer, so he'll be you know possibly starting. But let's just look at last year's um, stats. 12 points a game, three rebounds, four assists, 46%. So, well, you said it's projection for this season, didn't you? So, I, Mate, Derek White is the one where I would say what are you doing potentially there, move out. Uh, yeah, move him. I, I yeah. would put some of those special mentions. Sorry, honourable mentions. Special mentions is where you go to school, isn't it? Well done for turning <laughs> up. Um... Is that what you got? <laughs> no. <laughs> you had to turn up to get those. Um, no, I would put some of those. I would put somebody off of uh, the honourable mentions above Derek White personally. Yeah, but I mean, I'm going to make Mark L's case here. He's a starting point guard. Derek White came off the bench last season. Mark L's playing against better opposition. Okay, he started the season off with injuries, and then you see how the magic ran with Mark L. Fultz. He made he was the engine. He made the magic tick. Driving the paint, putting the right pass in the right place. Some of those passes, absolutely beautiful. First overall pick. And you got, okay, Cade Cunningham's at 19. The guy's played 76 games. Okay, his numbers 26 and 6, but he's on a Pistons team that's got nothing else. So Granted, you know, 99% of others would have Cunningham higher than Fultz. I'm not saying Fultz should be higher, but he was only a couple of years after him first overall pick. Is he that much better than Mark L. Fultz, Cade Cunningham? I don't think so. But, you know, president of Mark L. Fultz. You know, I'm... Cunningham has a lot of potential. I'm not sold on him. Hmm. He needs to stay fit, like what we've said yep. about Wendell. There, there's where I was going to go. And Zion. So you know, you know, hopefully he has an injury-free season, killing him, and he does well. You know, um, but at the same time, I hope Mark Hall has an injury-free season, and I think that we'll see improved um, stats there. So you know, it is what it is. Um, the, the these lists are you know clickbait, aren't they? And they they're made there to. Uh, Anger, Bait. some fans, and um, obviously we never get mentioned. So, but you know, you look at Cole Anthony as well. Um, he was you know playing like an all star when when we were struggling year before last. Um, we thought he'd be most improved player. Doesn't even get a mention. Um, so you know, you put Cole Anthony on the on the LA Lakers. He's on this list for me. Gary? So I I think it's a bit of disrespect the fact that he plays on the magic, uh, but there we go. Gary, can you disagree with Gene anyway? Um, I think the it comes down to this idea of potential again. 
and Chris Paul's on that list. But Chris Paul's probably going to be a backup in Golden State, and his production's been going down year on year. Yep. Chris Paul had an awful season for Chris Paul's standards last season. He wasn't good. Chris Paul did not do well last season. So I think going into the next season, if you were to say, who would you rather have? Would you really say, oh, I'm going to have Chris Paul over one of those guys? I don't think I would. And then you see some of the honourable mentions. D'Angelo Russell, is he on that list? He yep. is. So yeah. you're telling me, like, I'm, I'm not being funny here, but you would rather have D'Angelo Russell over Cole Anthony or Mark Fultz? Because I, I, I wouldn't. I'm not being... Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. And I'm not sitting here saying that either of them should be the top 30 based on injuries. So I, th I look at it and I can see Cade and I can see the argument and I'm like, what? Well, I think Cade's legit. I really do. I think Cade Cunningham a, is a franchise player. But when you're looking at it, are you going, well, we've got this guy in here, a bit like Zion, where he hasn't played that many games, but this is what he's done when he's been healthy. So that's what we're projecting. And then you're saying, but we're going to overlook these guys because they haven't been healthy. Or the other way of looking at it is, is they've just forgotten, which I think is more likely the case. Hmm. End of the day, though, right? If you had a draft, all 30 teams just put guards on deck now. Yeah. Do you think any of our guys would go in the top 30? I think they'd be yeah. in and around the 30. Yeah. It's a deep I would. But I think you'd that's, be... that's the thing. You, you, you said it at the start, G. There are so many good guards out there. And Gary, you're absolutely right. It's a deep list. There's they a should lot have made the honourable mentions, list. though. They should have made the honourable mentions. I agree. Mm. 100%. That's where I think... I think Markel should have been in the honourable mentions. On... Why is Jade, why is Jade and Ivy in the honourable mentions? Uh, really? The, 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 Russell, the they, no, him the as way, well. Him the as way well. this projection was done was... Stats off a of basketball reference, positional. Uh, they also openly said that they use their eyes, that they use their eye test, what they've seen, um, what they're feeling. So there was, there is some personal objectivity within this list as well. Hang on, I missed this one. Jalen Williams. Is that Jalen I mean, Williams from OKC? Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to curse word because this is a family friendly podcast, but what? Is that because he had a good end of season and he ran Paolo close to Rookie of the Year? He won Rookie of the Year, gee. He won it. He basically won and the Fed. Unbelievable. The unbelievable. Yeah. They they don't watch they don't watch the magic, basically. Yeah. Here we go. So separate post, they had top three trade targets for each team. Cole, um, Markel. All got meant and Cole, Markel, Jalen Suggs all got mentioned as um players that certain other teams would like and fit in well. Um I think Cole got mentioned as being somebody who would fit really well in LA in the Lakers team. Um equally getting mentioned was our draft capital, which was assessed as being the seventh best in the league. Um, our top three targets were listed as being Anthony Simons, Colin Sexton, and D'Angelo Russell. So, for a little bit of fun, is there any one of those three that you'd like to see us chase? And if so, why? Let's go with you, Gary. If you're saying to me I, I had to pick one and I wouldn't mind seeing them in Orlando, it would be Anthony Simons. Yeah. Um, the other two guys, I don't think, improve us at all. And I, I like the competitive edge of Colin Sexton. And I think he's actually become an underrated player, Colin Sexton. But at the same point in time, when you look at what we have, we've already got like Cole Anthony, for example, who could do the same job, I think, as Colin Sexton, but is already established in Orlando. And I don't think D'Angelo Russell would, would get minutes on the Magic, really. You know, he's, he, it's pr he had that great season with the Brooklyn Nets and then it's kind of fallen back to where he was before. So Anthony Simons, if you said one of those three guys, he could actually be somebody who you'd say would pair well, for example, in a starting backcourt with Markel Fultz. I think they would work well together. 
but the other two, not for me, Clive. Call it Andy Townsend. <laughs> <laughs> G, as it impacts yeah. directly on your favourite guy, is well, there any of those three that you? No, I wouldn't trade Mark Al for any of those. No I'm way. Not saying I'm trade him. I'm saying... Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, but um, those three guys. No, D'Angelo Russell. Um, I'm I'm of the same opinion as Gary that he doesn't. He doesn't belong on the Orlando Magic. Colin Sexton was a free agent a couple of years ago, if I remember rightly, and we could have possibly picked him up. But um, like Gary said, you know, he's Cole Anthony 2.0 for me. He's a, he's not as good as Cole. So I, I can't see the logic and go in there. Um, Anthony Simons, obviously, he comes with a large salary um, hundred million contract signed over four seasons, so that's twenty five million per, um, which obviously would hamper us, shall we say, um, in seasons to to, to come. Um, if we were to trade for him, but he, like Gary said, for me is is the best best of those three. Um, it's scoring, isn't it? It's the scoring, yeah. It's the scoring. I mean, he's a little bit undersized, but you know, he can get the three off. You know, he he's got hops. He can get to the rim. Um, good player, good player, and you know, Orlando and, native. And I was going to say, and named after a certain legend and, of our Anthony team, Dion Hardaway. Yeah, yeah. I'm the same. D'Angelo Russell. I don't see it. And I um, know I'm not as harsh about him as you, RG. You, you've just never been a fan. So Colin Sexton, I can see the argument for, but the the weaknesses he has, I don't think we need to take on. And that leaves Mr. Simons, player I really do like. I've got to be honest. Um, is the right age, great shooting. The one thing that goes against him is the contract that um, we're going to have in a couple of seasons, two or three big decisions to be making as to what we're paying certain players. And do we need to be saddled with something large at this stage? I mean... With the salary cap going up, though, and an amount of money being thrown around, you know, Jalen Brown, what he's getting next couple of seasons, is $25 million acceptable for someone of that productivity? 21 points a game in 35 minutes, 44% from the field, 37 from downtown. I don't know. And he might get better looks with Paolo and France. I was going to say, what he does do, the, the, this is the argument for him for me, he takes pressure away from our other players for shooting. He, we possibly some of those, some of the other guys probably get better looks as a result of having somebody like him on the court for the team. Yeah, I can, there's an argument for him. It's a huge argument, in my opinion, for him. Um, of those three, is the only one I'd really be excited about. Hmm. Yeah. Good stuff. All right, then, boys. So, to everybody, thank you, as always, for listening and watching. Please hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel, Orlando Magic UK. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, TikTok, where Gary's been quite busy, doing quite a few bits on there, mate. Yeah, I know. Uh, hit, <laughs> hit up on X, uh, all Orlando Magic UK. Uh, keep an eye out for the Patreon stuff. We really would appreciate any support that you can give us. And until next week, from Gary, Garam, and myself, go magic.